So, we're just going to nim through here. We've got two nims on. We've got a, uh, a purdy gone on the point. You can see that. And a pheasant tail, good old pheasant tail on the dropper, about 50 centimetres apart. Got on a Sempi leader, probably 16 foot, no taper. Remember, I don't want any taper in my system. Better contact to my nymphs, better drift, better take detection. So let me quick go in here, see if we can get some of it on film. Nice out of season grayling. Took the dropper. That two and a half mil pheasant tail. Just show you him. Like a bar of soap. So I'm trying to hold all my line off the water. I've got my rod extended. You know, start, starting short, working my way out into the faster water, you can only line off the water. I don't want anything touching the water, apart from a tip it, obviously going down into my flies. I want to be in contact to my nymphs. Play around with your weight of your nymphs. Don't always just think, uh, I'll put on a two mil up there or a 2.5 and a three mil down here. You know, I'll, I'll probably go back through here with a heavier nymph. Like I say, you want to be holding all your line off the water. Better protect, protection, so your angle of your indicator from the end of your rod through your, through your leader to your indicator down into your flies all wants to be at like a 45 degrees off the water. Some people like to lay their indicator on the water, but your flies aren't fishing directly under your indicator. They're actually fishing flat. So if you've got all your line at that angle, for instance, your, your nymphs are, are, are directly down from your indicator. So another couple of minutes for we see if we can get him off.
that's how effective it can be. There's two fish out there, probably in a similar size, a couple of feet from each other. Another nice trailing, lively thing. You see some people, they're trying to cast too far and then they're trying to pick, just use their rod like that to hold all the line off the water. Well, if you're in that position, holding all your line off the water, how, how can you then possibly strike? So what I like to do is I figure I've ate my line back. I'm still holding all my line off the water as much as I can, but you know, I figure I've eaten it through my fingers. I don't, the reason I use a nymphing line, I don't like to figure eight mono straight into my fingers. I like the nymphing line. It's a 0 0.55 nymphing line. So I'm holding all my rod at that angle, like that. And then I figure of eating it back. The speed of the current. See if there's any more. Again, that fast water, you know, it's the third fish I've had out of here now in that fast water. Nice little brown. A few lads are just starting out. Start short, underneath the rod tip, tracking it back, keeping contact with those nymphs. That's the most important thing. People going about, oh, what you're using, what's your latest this, what's the latest that. Just get in contact with your nymphs. Better drift, better detection. That's all what it's about. You get those few things right, everything else will follow. Don't be obsessed with, oh, he's got this, he's using that, he must, that's why he's catching more fish. It's all about your drift, your contact to your nymphs, better take detection. You can just start, start short, extend your range, the fish will follow. Brown. This time on the pheasant tail. Barb the soak comes straight out. He's not a big fella, but fish is a fish. And if you're in competition, that'd be counting now, you'd be far on the board without even moving.
Jesus. 